The calling of God on your life is not a destination. Like we get to a building, a size, a influence and infrastructure. Okay, our church is this. No, the calling of God in our life is a consistent walk with Him, developing who we are, developing our character and actually allowing us to see how great God is because we recognize how little we are able to do in our own ability. Good morning. Welcome back to Light in the Darkness. Today we are busy talking through a bit about our story. Yep. The last episode was about our story and our journey into grace. And now we're going to talk today a little bit about our journey into our Redemption Church because once you have an encounter with God and His love and His grace, you can't but do something about it, right? Yep. And so we found ourselves now leading Redemption Church, but actually that's on the back end of a lot of yeses to God yes. and, a, and an adventure. And we wanted to share that with you so that it can possibly be a testimony to your life and also let you know that um, God has something for you to do for Him, to walk with Him, to be a part of actually living life on earth with God using you as a testimony for His goodness and His grace. Amen. Amen. Cool. So what did we cover in the last one, babe? We covered our journey into grace. and what That's we... right. So now let's talk a little bit about our journey into redemption. Yes. So both myself and Tara were on staff at Rhema Church, working under my dad and being a part of what God was doing there for many years on the other side of being impacted by the gospel right. and saying yes. And, um, you know, getting involved in church day by day led to us both being on staff, heading up different parts of mainly the young adult ministry there mm -hmm. and doing Sunday night services. And then um, found myself having a very interesting moment where I felt like God really impressed on my heart that we should go and start a church uh, on the other side of Johannesburg. And it was a very weird experience for me because I had never planned ever to not be at Rhema till I went to heaven. Um, that's that's the church I grew up in. That's that's my family. That's yeah. my home. It's something we had never, never discussed. And I, I came home and you were like, you saw me, I was white. Yeah, it was at one of the conferences, I think, at Rhema. And um, I think I was at home with like the kids. our kids and they yeah. weren't feeling well. So I wasn't there. And Josh came home and he looked like he'd seen a ghost or something. He was like pale. Yeah. And I he, was literally quite said, he literally said to me, he's like, I don't know how to tell you this. What just happened? I'm like, okay, what could have possibly just happened? <laughs> you were in a conference at the church. And eventually he sat down and said, God just told me in the service that we need to go start a church. Yeah, and I mean, I, the, and, the thing uh, is like everyone gets told to start a church. So I was raised knowing that that's the default for every single person, yeah. you know, who has a problem at their church says, God's told me to start a new church. And so like I knew that wasn't what I heard. and But I understood that that's how it could be packaged. And yeah. I, I had to go and say, so I said to Tara, if it's God, a whole bunch of things have to happen. Yeah, I said, if it's God, God will confirm it. Yeah, so I said, kind let's of, wait. We made a wait. list of stuff because I said we don't have any savings. So I yeah, didn't expect. He was just like, this is impossible. Mm. This is impossible. We don't have any savings. We've never thought of leaving yeah. Rhema. Rhema's the church we Rhema's grew up our home, in. Yeah. It's our home. And we also were like. This it, wasn't the plan. It has to be with the blessing. Like it has to be done well and it has to be yeah. good. And my dad needs to feel confirmation about it. Like it was about this can't just be our plan. This like has to be like, obvious that it's God's plan. Yeah, God, if this is you and I was, I didn't just eat too much cheese or something in the speaker's yes. lounge, um, you have to show up here. You have to do this. You have to confirm it. Do I, do I behave weird when I eat cheese? Is that what you're but, well, apparently they say if you eat cheese before, like you're going to sleep, you can okay. have nightmares. I don't know if it's true. <laughs> you learn something new every day. I never knew that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, on. okay, carry on. So, so the bottom line was it needs to be God's plan, not our plan. Yeah. And so um, over a series of events, like I wrote down, I said, you know, we would need a few hundred thousand rand just to buy 
a sound system just to have, and we had a phone call from someone who had no relationship with us. But said first God tell, told tell them, them about our budget. It's very important three, what it was. It was 300,000 rand. It was 300,000 rand because we said- And I said, need we that said, for speakers, for, for chairs. For sound Kids and church needed something, and we signs. Were, the plan was to start in a school hall. Yeah. Because we will find a school hall Listen, somewhere. And where God, and 300, told, us, where God told us, where God told us to go. We had never been. We didn't hang out in this part of Johannesburg. It was 40 odd kilometers away from mm. where I was raised was in the eastern side of Joburg. We'd never hung out there. We had no reference point. So I was like, okay. And then the interesting is a few things happened. Firstly, someone phoned us out the blue that we had no relationship with that said, God, I was going to give 300,000 Rand uh, and God told me to give it to you personally. And I don't know why that is. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's exactly the amount that to we had budgeted to the seat. It was 309. Or so I don't can't remember the exact note. It was on a sticky note. I saw then it. the second <laughs> thing was my dad and I had a conversation around it and my dad... Um, gave us his blessing and really it was, it was hard. It's hard to talk about change. Um, but he was so gracious and saying, let's, let's put this before the Lord. And there was confirmation and, and he, he and I both allowed people to speak into that. And we both put a plan together that would allow that to be a godly thing. So, um, we had blessing, we had a confirmation, we had a release. Um, and the truth is we also honestly, um, we had never done this before, and I think we had a picture of what this would look like, but in reality, we had no idea. So for us, I think what was very key in it was I was serving in my dad's church, but I had no idea what it, what it is to start something, lead something, to grow something. You know, we, we had our budget, just, just our budget in young adults was like, you know, multiples of what our whole budget is mm-hmm. as a church. And it was just, it was just easy to write off of the grace that God had put on my dad's life and the grace that was already on Rhema. Um, you think it's you, you know, you're like, sure, you know. And actually, so, I just have to go back a little bit because it's actually, I'm quite precise with this story. Yeah, because but I you think, also. No. Yes. But actually. Don't be a perfectionist now. No, 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 no. But okay. it's actually very important because Josh had to have the blessing from his dad. Um before we had the release to go start the church. So God said, let's yeah, go start a church. And it was actually precisely 30 minutes after Josh left the office with his dad, receiving the blessing from yes, his dad. That they, that did I've we receive that money? The money. Yeah. the money didn't come in before that. Yes, and, that's true. and I just think that, that was, it was actually really an, an important yeah. fact to our journey because leaving with blessing is so important. And mm-hmm. having those conversations done in the right way and, and is a God in order. I, I have, I, you know, working with family, let's be honest, that's not easy. So like, it's not like I never had days serving under my dad where yeah. I wasn't like, you know, I'll go do my own thing. But the truth is God never blesses that space. So whenever I went with like, oh, you know, I'm so frustrated, which is how everyone can feel in all situations. It wasn't my dad's issue, it was I needed to grow, but I was frustrated. And so I found myself saying to God and God's like, no, humble yourself and serve. But then when I was comfortable and I was like, this is cool, this is easy, this has momentum, this has, then God's like, now I want you to like make the change. And then I was like, what? That's not even, that's not even the game plan here. The game plan here is this thing's, And my dad's church is such an amazing church that has such an amazing legacy in our nation. But Mm -hmm. I feel like even stepping out to do something um, from scratch wasn't actually about leaving Mm Raymate. It was about finding what was in us. Yeah. Because I really believe one day when my dad is in heaven, which we don't believe will be anytime soon, we're trusting God. He has a long life and he's healthy and strong. But I know that I can't live off the grace that was on him. We have to walk in the call of God on our lives. Yes. And I feel like for me, that was what re- that is what redemption is about, discovering what God says to us because we can't go and try. And, you cannot recreate the past. Mm-hmm. You give honor to the past and we are so grateful for the ground mm-hmm. that my dad and my mom and Rayma Church and everyone who has given their hand to that work and all the great other churches in our nation, there's a great legacy in this country, but let's put our loyalty to the future. We put yeah. our honor towards what has happened, but let Amen. us trust God that what lies ahead, you know, um, right. is, is even greater. Yes. And so I felt like that was our, and one of the things to let you know is when we decided to step and start redemption, we really had a picture of what this was going to look like. And it was definitely not what we thought it was going to look like. I think I had seen some of my friends around the world go and have instant 
instant church, instant success, instant that. And we started and it's funny, I really <laughs> thought a whole bunch of people would want to be a part of our church. Yep. And um, Well, we started like in a field. <laughs> yeah, we, there was a small holding nearby and we're like, well, we'll just be in this little farmland until we get in a school or until we get in a cool venue, yeah. you know. Only to find out there weren't any that were interested in yeah. us having church in. So we were stuck in like a picnic area and there was like a handful of people. I think our first few meetings had 40 people. And we had peacocks that used to We had a vicious peacock. A vicious peacock on the plots that used to literally attack people, they used to like chase, chase people you. with its claws. And um, we started with a handful of people, Amazing, yeah, an did. amazing journey of God's grace. But what was amazing was what we had in us was this picture and first, God, I think redemption has been a much about, as much about growing us yeah. as it has been about growing a church. And let me say this, whatever God calls you to, a few things you need to know. Number one, there's, there's, there's three seasons I see in life whenever you walk with God. First one is when you truly get a revelation of what God wants to do with your life, your first reaction should be this, I can't do. Mm. I'm not good enough. If you think I've got this, you have no idea. Uh, you're going to get humbled very quickly. Mm. So the first reaction is always, my goodness, I need God. This is bigger than us. This is bigger than me. Then the second yeah. thing is you then need faith to go, but I'm still going to see God do it. So like if, if, you're, if you're, the calling on your life is to do, do this, pray over that, serve here, be a part of local church, sing, worship, lead, preach, teach, so whatever it is, you go, wow, okay, I can't do that. Then you go, but I need faith to do that because God's going to do it through me. So I say yes anyway. Yes. And then once you get it down, in other words, now it starts to have momentum, God challenges you to hand it over. In other words, who can you raise up to do the same? Mm -hmm. So you have to multiply what you do. You have to, it's disciple. In other words, you can't hold on to it your whole life. You've got to say, now who can I give this to mm -hmm. so that I can go through the same process? Humble myself over the next season, have faith to step into it, and then have faith to raise someone else up and release them into it. Mm -hmm. And even in our church, whenever we get to a level where God is growing us, we go through that process. And even now we're back to the humbling space, mm -hmm. which is, wow, what God is calling us to, we can't do. Mm -hmm. But as he starts to do it, we do it. And then we don't say, well, I'm the reason God's moving. We then say, how can I release someone else yeah. to walk in this? Um, and I think like with redemption, honestly, what God is doing is not because of us. Like oh, yeah. we are just totally in awe of God's grace. Just willing vessels. And the incredible think, people you know. that have said yes with us. I mean, pastors are often reminded of who's left. Mm. Like in life, I don't know if you've noticed, you always know who has left or yeah. who has rejected you. But you know what? The true gold is in seeing who has accepted you. Mm. We have such amazing people who have said yes, who are faithful mm. in being a part of this who are gracious with us, Amen. Um, in, you know, and even honestly, the longer we've done church, the more the respect we have for um, our heroes grows. Yeah. Like, and I think, I think, um, you know, if you didn't walk the journey with us and you've, you've only come to know redemption now, you, it might look like oh, everything's just fallen in their lap and it's just amazing and <laughs> what a fantastic church. And, you know, we've had a walk a journey and absolutely after our, small holding field startup, yes. <laughs> we moved to another location, which we called our cave. Yeah, it was under, it was in the basement so we went of from a shopping a field center. To a cave. <laughs> As you walked out our doors, you walked into underground car parks. Um, and it was very hard to find us because you walk through the doors and it was stairs down. And then that was the and church we were not in a allowed basement. To put signage much we weren't up. allowed to put signage. We weren't allowed to Google map us because we weren't a permanent tenant. We were no. like a Sunday pop-up. So you couldn't have a Google map. So people would look for you, but they just drive around in circles because we weren't allowed a Google map. Yeah. And, and I think um, a lot of people that came that eventually found our church, which was normally times three, um, yeah, three visits to three, find us. Three visits, three drive arounds to find us. They eventually find us. And then they described us as a rat's nest. Well, they said, this is like a rat's nest. Yeah, because as soon down, as the church people all finishes, everyone just starts coming out of every terrible, nook and cranny. And it's like, where are these people coming from? Because you can't see like a big building. It was not the place for claustrophobic people no, to do church. It was a club. It actually was a nightclub. Yeah, but, but here's the thing that I want to say. First and foremost, um, 
when you do what God's called you to do, you can't build it with your natural ability. Yeah. So I grew up in an, in Rhema, which literally is like probably the pulpit in the nation for the prophetic voice, for top preachers and speakers, mm-hmm. the best conferences, the best worship. And so when we started Redemption, we had no budget mm-hmm. and we had no crowd. So we couldn't have conferences and big speakers no. and big events we just couldn't. And and it was scary because the people that had to come to church had to come to hear what we had to say. We and, were it. <laughs> and so and here's the thing: the anointing of God for you is to be who He's called you to be. Yeah. You cannot walk in an anointing to be someone else. Yeah. There is an anointing on your life for you. And here's the thing: I think so often we try to avoid letting God grow us allowing our testimony to come to the front, you know, because it's like, let's just have, even in business, it's like, I just want to be rich. No, 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 no. Wealth and success is a fruit of a character development. Mm -hmm. And you can't avoid that process of, of, because if you just step into, if we had just gotten an instant congregation, I don't know how good that would be for us. I don't think it would be good for us because I think we wouldn't have. But what was really interesting in how many years did we spend in the cave? Four Four years, four or five years. And it really felt like, almost like it was limiting. Well, it was limiting. Like we, because we never treated Redemption Church like a small church. For a lot of the time, yeah. it was a small church. Even when like, on our first Sunday, we had like 50 people. I was like, this church is going to reach 50,000. Like, this is going to, And everything is we've fun done when you're and led. To, it was, it's always been, of, this is a big church. Yeah. This is going to do something it's incredible. It's a small church with a big, with a big vision. And with a big, a big vision mm-hmm. in those five years. And in the five years, we never stopped looking for what's next, where can we move to that people can find Over 50 buildings. our church? Like Josh, jo- Josh was championing that. He like searched day and night for a new building, for, p- for a place where we could call home. And it was supernaturally like blocked, like doors closed. It was, it was not normal the way we just got so mm. many brick walls and closed yeah, doors, yeah. right? And, um, But I really think, you know, God's timing is so perfect and we needed to be in that cave. And even though we felt limited and we felt like it was too small Mm. in that time, like we really found who we are as a church, what our values are, what the vision is, what the mandate for our church is. It was preparation like uh, for our team, our volunteer team, our Mm. leaders. Like Mm. I think um, we raised a strong army in that cave. And even if you look at how God gave us, so like even like the Netherlands came along. Yeah. I think the thing is for us, we would have approached the Netherlands in a way of like, these are the things that matter. But through that mm-hmm. process of God growing us, not growing our church, of course our church was growing, but it yeah. was more about us growing. Like yes. I really, really honestly now, when God gives us something to do, I see the responsibility in it, not yeah. necessarily the right. Yes. Like honestly, some people say to me, you know what? Pastor Josh, you know, maybe one day you'll, you and your dad and Raymond, I go, that would be a huge honor. But at this, on the flip side, I don't see it as a right no. because I know what my dad's been through leading that. And I understand what it is to yeah. lead yeah. right now around the world. Every president's every word in every nation is getting criticized mm-hmm. as much as it's getting praised. Mm-hmm. And whenever God elevates you into a position of leadership, you have to recognize that doesn't come with my rights no. or now I'm actually known. It comes with huge responsibility. Yeah. And I feel like what God has done, and this is something I think maybe today the theme really is, the calling of God on your life is not a destination. Like we get to a building, a size, a influence and infrastructure. Okay, our church is this. No, the calling of God in our life is a consistent walk with him, developing who we are, developing mm-hmm. our character and actually allowing us to see how great God is because we recognize how little we are able to do in our own ability. Yep. Yep. Um, and, and, and I think, though, if you look at our life, what I really would love for you to get today is this. It's just been a series of daily yeses. In spite of not knowing what's going on or misunderstanding, it's been a series of just saying yes to the Lord. Yeah. And something else I think that's important is don't break the relationships in your life that God's placed there to grow your character. I think we've, we've been quite intentional with staying in relationship with people that are walking with us. I felt like I, I still learn from my dad. Yes. I still learn from Pastor Prince and I, I still have other pastors that I haven't like 
cut off because yeah, today the advice doesn't suit me. I think you've got to go and say, God, you place people in my life to develop me so that I can. And I think... Yeah, and, no. and don't dismiss or look small on the process. Yes. If we didn't walk through the last seven years in the field with the peacocks. In hiding. In the cave, we would not be here today. Yeah, and, um, and not even and that we've arrived, but that we wouldn't be seeing the fruit that we see yeah, today. Yeah, and, and it wouldn't, we, you know, I think for everything God has for this church and for us and, and the mandate on this church, we, he needed to develop some character in us. So don't dismiss yeah. your process. Mm. God's plan is great for your life. Mm. Um, and but I've, he needs to develop character sometimes and his timing is perfect. And what I find is often when we get to where, what's next, we look mm. back on what we had and we go, you know what, we could have appreciated that more. Yes. Because of what's next doesn't just come with the reward, it comes with the responsibility. responsibility yep. And um, so often I look back and I go, man, those days where no one bothered with us, no one fun. cared. It Easy was fun going. there. It was like, okay, you know, if no one shows up, no one shows up. If some people show up, I yeah. can think of some funny, we had some funny stories. I mean, yeah, we, we had some very funny stories. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm trying to think now, like literally in the beginning of church, I remember we had no air conditioners at all. Um, no circulation it was a warehouse. So we had these big, massive fans yes. and there was literally like, you know, in the movies when someone is, is, is their hair is being blowing, I would preach to a congregation and these two fans were on either side of the stage. I mean, big, I mean the size of a person, right? Like I don't mean a house fan. I mean an industrial fan. Cause that's what that, that, that company that <laughs> rented out equipment. get blown away in worship. And it was like, <laughs> and then people were all looking like that, but they couldn't hear what I was saying. Back. Oh my goodness. I was in kids church. Yeah. Had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. Hey, dressed like a bunny. (laughs) (laughs) There's some funny stories. God has a sense of humor. The peacocks chasing the people. Yeah. Ah, but you know what? All in all, there is grace for today. There is grace for where you are, and there is grace for where God wants to take you. And what I notice is this: Um, just trust God with your future by acting on it in obedience today. I feel like if you're just obedient with what you have today, God takes care of the end destination and you just see his grace and his supply. And one of the things we're passionate about as a church is, is actually, I'd love to see, I'd love to see what we're a part of that. We see others walk in that. Mm -hmm. I would love to see, and we believe our church is going to see many, many, many preachers of the gospel better than me and mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Many, many incredible mm-hmm. leaders rise up stronger than us yes. because this is not about us. I think of generations and generations to come and cities and nations. And I am so passionate about giving my life to something that just makes a big deal about Jesus yeah. and draws people into the local church to get to know Jesus and tell more people about Jesus. Yeah. So, And I just also wanted to say one last thing that um, I really feel like a whole journey has been a big yes, but it hasn't been a yes when we've had it all in order. We didn't have the money to start Redemption Church, but we had the conversation with Josh's dad before we had the money. Mm. So we, that was literally like, okay, we're going now, but now we've got nothing. Then the money came through. Yeah. And so often I find people wait until they have it all in order, yes. all the ducks in a row, have the money, have the provision. Don't wait. Say mm. yes to Jesus. If he's calling you out, say yes. The mm. provision, everything you need will be added, Amen. will come. And every step of our journey in redemption the last seven years has been a yes and then supernatural provision Mm. so um yeah don't don't wait to have it all in order before you say yes amen so So let's receive communion together and uh we just pray that today somewhere in that story you heard the holy spirit telling you that you have a future you have a plan encouraging you speaking life into you letting you know that it's not over that god is a redeemer of time god has a perfect plan for you in your local church in a local church Uh, in the local church um, to be used by him. Amen. Amen. So let's just receive communion together right now. Cracker, your bread out. We're going to be speaking over this. Say, this is the body of Jesus. This is the body of Jesus. Broken for me. Broken for me. That every single sickness. That every single sickness. Every single issue with my body. Every single issue with my body. He has paid for in full. He has paid for in full. By his stripes. By his stripes. I am healed. I am healed. So now we break this and we receive. 
And would you lead us with the blood of Jesus, babe? Sure. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your precious blood. For your precious blood. That was poured out for me. Poured out for me. For my f- sin. For my sin. My lack. My lack. My shame. My shame. My falling short. My falling short. Thank you. Thank you. By your precious blood. By your precious blood. I'm forgiven. I am forgiven. Loved. Loved. Accepted. Accepted. Appointed. Appointed. And anointed. And anointed. For such a time as this. Yes, for such In a time. In Jesus' as... name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And I would encourage you today, as you receive communion, maybe you have something that you're worried that you've messed up or or you haven't done right or you're not on the right track. Trust the communion to do a work, to start a work, that today is a new day, that tomorrow you can make a decision to say yes today and just walk it out with the Lord on a daily basis. Amen. Amen. And one last thing, share your story with us. Yes. Right to us below yes, tell how, us you what you've got out of us. yes. how you found redemption how you found redemption how you came to redemption um, we love hearing your stories yes and and wherever you're watching from around the world being connected with us we love and appreciate you mm. thank you for saying yes Amen. to what god is doing in our church in yes. the church around yes. the world we love Amen. you and we appreciate you we'll see you again here on light in the darkness